Now brushes in Photoshop has become super popular by artists today, and especially with concept art and just illustration and all over the board, Photoshop is popping up as being one of the programs for painting and illustration. And brushes has become super powerful in CS5 with the addition of brush presets and the mixer brush. But uh, first let's take a look at some of the interface locations and some of the workflows for how to uh, go about doing some painting. So your brushes are located in your tools panel or your toolbox. You have your little brush. There's your brush tool, your pencil tool, color replacement tool, and mixer brush tool. And then also what's associated with that is the healing brushes and then the clone tools. Now these are all different ways to paint in Photoshop and we're going to go over these in a second. Um, but right when you select the brushes you see that you have options in your options bar and then also under window you have brush, brush presets. Now when you select that from the window it brings open your panels. But now in CS5 when you have all your panels organized and I set up a uh, workspace for painting for me which I have them all conveniently located in one grouped panel. So I have a brush, brush presets, tool presets, and clone source. And you could also go into brush tool, right click, and choose brushes there. Now the different brush locations all point to the same thing and all point to the same functionality. So in our options bar we can select brushes and brush presets. We can even go to our brush menu or our brush panel and then we have layer transparency modes, which are also painting transparency modes, opacity, and tablet pressure, flow, airbrush, and a tablet pressure override. But all these different controls can be controlled from within the brush and the brush presets. Now we're going to quickly go over the different brush types. So in our toolbox, or our tools panel, we have the brush tool, pencil tool, color replacement tool, and mixer brush tool. Let's look at the brush tool. Obviously, this allows you to paint. So what you want to do is you can select the color. You can hold down Control and Alt, or Control and Option, and click and drag the size of your brush. You can choose a swatch, or if you hold down Control, Alt, and Command, you can pop up your palette and select the color from there and then go ahead and paint. So that's the brush tool. Let's take a look at the pencil tool. Now the pencil tool basically is an alias drawing tool. If we zoom in here, You can see that our stroke is not anti-aliased, it's not smooth, and it's just a hard edge drawing tool. Now what you could do with this is you have auto erase. And what auto erase will do is actually paint white over the area that you've already colored in and kind of remove it. So you could paint new go over it again and auto erase which is actually pretty helpful. Then we have our color replacement tool and we have to jump into a different example for this. So in here you can select a color and then you could paint and you could see that it's replacing parts of your image and the values in your image and the color in your image to the color that you have selected. Let's take a closer look at this. So let's change your brush size, choose a different color, and then we could go ahead and do some color replacing. So let's jump back. Now the mixer brush mimics realistic paint medium by mixing, combining, and blending colors. So I'm going to set my layer to be normal so it's opaque and you can see that it kind of has a little more blend to it and also if we just select a new color we 
will see the blending options and the mixing that it does. So I'm going to go ahead and pop up my and you can see that when it paints on top of it it's actually mixing and blending the colors. Let me gra grab something a little more drastic here. zoom in a little bit. You can see that it's behaving just like regular paint. And as the colors get closer together, they start blending together more. You could grab different brush presets and go ahead and use them to sort of. And that's essentially what the mixer brush does. There's also some controls, which you have load the brush after each stroke, clean the brush after each stroke, kind of just like a real brush. So if we turn this off, each stroke sort of renews itself every time you pick it up and put it down. If we turn that on, let's move out of the way here, grab a darker color. You can kind of see what that does. And then clean the brush. So it starts from a clean slate. And just to give you an idea of how to mix and match those things. And there's some also controls of wetness and load, mix, flow. And we'll get into the, some of that stuff a little bit later. But that's essentially what the mixer brush does. Next is the art history brushes. So we have the history brush tool and the art history brush tool. So if we look at the history brush tool and we try to paint, we get a pop-up that says can't use the history brush because a history state has not been designated as the source for painting. So to set a state, you need to go into your history panel and you need to set a state. And you do that by clicking on the left side the icon where it adds the little history brush. So if we click that, and we grab a brush and start painting, it's not going to do a whole lot here. But if we switch to our Art History Brush tool, and that allows you to kind of um, affect and stylize um, your painting with like some strokes and some different styles here at the top, and we could grab a different brush and you could see that this is affecting our brush strokes only and the colors that are on top of it. And now if we switch back to our art history brush it remembered our snapshot and we're going to start painting with this. And so it remembered our last sample and it's kind of starting to paint like our style from the history. And our strokes and our pixels from the history. And those are our history brushes. Now let's look at the healing brushes. So I'm going to jump to my other image and I'm going to look at the spot healing brush. Now this brush is used for sort of spot removal and so you can see that I have some uh, lens issues here and if I zoom out a little bit 
you can see that I got these random little spots. So you can go ahead and grab the spot healing brush, adjust your size, and all you need to do is click and drag. And it's going to use its smart engine and its smart functionality to figure out what's around it and how to fill that in and remove that spot. Now you also have some things like proximity match and create texture and content aware, but uh, for the most part I leave it on content aware and does a pretty good job. And then you have sample all layers, which if you have a layered document, it will actually look at all the layers combined and solve it from there. So I'm just going to go through and go clean these up really quick. And you can see that it does a pretty good job. And it's pretty fast to go in and touch these up. Rather than with the clone tool, you kind of have to think about um, you know where you're where you're sampling things from and uh, this is a little more no-brainer and some things along the edge and it can't really solve from what I found um, but that brings us to the healing brush tool and the healing brush tool allows you to select a sample and then it's going to try to solve it from your sample. Now let's also take a look at the clone stamp and the clone stamp has options here and as you know the clone you can select a brush and you can see there's kind of like this brush preview of when it's over it and you sample it, it kind of shows you a preview of where that sample's going to be. Now you can sort of set presets for your samples and you could do that by clicking on the one sample and holding alt down and selecting a source and then you could place that. Now if you want another one, click on that sample like the clock and you have this one. So you go ahead and jump back and you have your original one or you could go to your next one and sample from there and so on and so forth. And then there's other some controls here for you to um, mess around with like your offset and you can kind of get pretty precise with your samples and your clone source. But we're gonna jump out of this and go back into our dude image. Now we're gonna go over our painting panels and what they allow you to do is customize, create, and manage your brushes and tools. So we have our brush panel, our brush preset panel, and our tool preset panel. Our clone source we already looked at, so we're going to start with our brush panel. Now the brush panel is all about customization and editing of your brushes. Your preset panel is about selecting your brush and also customizing a library and storing a library of brushes. And your tool presets is about customizing and storing a library of tool presets. Now in CS5 we have brush presets and this is new. Before if you wanted to make any brushes and save them and store them you did it as a tool preset. But now in CS5 you have brush presets. Now in the top right you have your drop down and the drop down for all of these menus is where you sort of manage them. Now in your brush presets we have different ways of displaying them text only, small thumbnail, large thumbnail, large list and so on. Now you can also access your preset manager there and manage your brushes here you can load them and unload them or your tools where you can load them and unload them here too. Now I have some tool presets that I want to load in from before so I'm going to delete these I'm going to hit load and in my folder I'm going to select my tool presets and these have been my stored tool presets from prior releases of Photoshop I'm going to hit done. Now in my tool presets you can see that they are located here jumping to my brush presets, I don't have any brush presets yet because this is new to CS5 
and so I have to create them and we'll show you how to do that. Now if by any time, let's jump back to our tool presets, if you want to save them, you can do save tool presets and you could store them here or replace them, which I'm going to do. And then you can see that they're accessible here. And then I also have some brushes from some other artists. Um, some of them are from Nomen Workshop and just other ones are just worldly famous. But you can reset your tools here too and basically manage your loading, unloading of your tool presets and your brush presets by this drop down. Now let's look at our brush presets and I'm going to go to my large thumbnail. Now we have new bristle brushes in CS5 and these are a little more um, realistic painting models or painting brushes where we can control different aspects of them. So if we select one here and we paint, you can sort of see their effect. But I'm going to clear this layer and just paint. And their feel is a little more like natural media. Now if we go into our brush panel where we customize and edit these, we can go ahead and edit this brush and dial it into something more specific to what we're looking for or what our project looks for and go ahead and save that. In our brush panel we can click on the brush tip shape and we have bristle qualities and so these are different ways to control the bristles of your natural media brush. We have round blunt, you can control the length, thickness, softness, your angle. in size. And go from there. Now depending on how large your brush is and the resolution of your image, like your brushes can get kind of slow. So notice when I'm painting on this here, there's a little bit of a delay because it's drawing lots of little brushes on top of it or lots of different layers of pixels to create this brush. So it's something to be mindful of that the bristle brushes take a little more sauce from your computer to process so they're not always going to be super fast. I'm just going to click a normal brush here and we can kind of customize this a little bit. Right now it's just a plain round brush and our spacing is kind of wide that's why we're getting sort of this uh, it's not a clean line so we're going to reduce that spacing, change the size of my brush, and you can see that it's a lot cleaner now. If we change our spacing the other direction, what you see on the bottom here is that you have basically one round brush, but it's controlled by adding the amount of these round brushes on top of each other and controlling the spacing until they become a smooth line. So as you draw, you can see, now that they're super far apart from each other, you get different spaces. Now with that, you could create a bunch of different effects. This is more like a dotted line, or a string of pearls, or something. So let's stick with that. And your scattering basically controls the randomness of how these are scattered. So obviously when you look at the menu here, if you start dragging this you could pull them apart and create more variation there. I'm not going to get too crazy with this because this is just an overview of this panel. And the count is how many of these things are being dr drawn. and you could see what they're doing there. Count jitter 
jitter is just like a random factor. And you could create some interesting brushes there. And then there's also fade, pen pressure, tilt, and stylus wheel and rotation. So these are different ways of applying it based off of your brush. And I suggest that you just kind of go through and you can see how these change based off of pen tilt and whatnot. Moving on, you have your texture. And you can use different textures from your pattern to apply to your to your brush. You can add it to each tip. You can invert it. There's your depth. and how you apply it to each one of the tips. So there, you could create some neat effects too. Another thing to be mindful of is that's texture, so you're drawing another thing on top of this brush. So all these controls can add up really fast depending on what you're doing and can make your brush really slow and, and behave slow and be not responsive. Dual brush is you could combine two brushes on top of each other. So here we have our circular brush with like an airbrush or a chalk. And sort of control those independently. So you can see by all these controls the power that you really have to create and customize brushes. Color dynamics. Now if we have a color selected, there's like foreground background jitter which sort of blends between the foreground and the background color. Let me make something obvious here so you can see. And again, there's your controls, your hue jitter, which is introducing other color into your brushes. You can make it subtle or just make it crazy. And then there's your saturation jitter, which is just random saturation, or you can control it and just make it subtle. Brightness jitter, random brightness, and your purity of how much of that blue you really want. Transfer is how your brush is transferring. So there's your opacity jitter. And you can see that some of your brushes are different opacities. And then there's your flow. And of course, noise. We'll add noise. Wet edges allows you to sort of mimic um, wet media. blend them together. Airbrush softens to like a spray. And smoothing you kind of always want on by default. But um, it does add a little bit of time to your brush. And then you have protect texture which will protect the texture of your brush. Of course you could use all this with opacity of your brush. You could control that from the option bar or from the number keys. So you can see that really quick you can just build up and customize a brush and um, say at the end of the day you're happy with this brush and you want to store it. We can go ahead 
and we could do new brush preset. It's going to ask for a name, and we could just call it Dave's test and capture brush size and preset, which we want to do. So if we have, if we like the size of our brush and we're going to use it over and over at this size, we can go ahead and save that. Otherwise, we don't have to check that. So then in our brush presets now, we can see we have Dave's test. And to see that better, we can do text only, and we have Dave's test. So we can switch to another brush, and then switch to this one. And that's kind of the workflow of your brush presets and customizing your brushes. Now in this example, I'm just going to show you how to create a quick simple brush from another brush, and then create a brush preset. So we have a new layer. I'm just going to draw like a circle on here really quick with another brush, and then I'm going to select it, and I'm going to do Edit, Define Brush Preset. We could name it here, but we could see in our thumbnail we have our circle, but then we also have our background image. Because in order for a brush preset to work, we need it to be on a transparent background. So let's grab our brush preset. Here's the one that we just created. And so when I stamp and draw it, my background is in with my brush, and we don't want that. So I'm going to turn off my guy, turn off my background. So it's just on transparent. I'm going to draw a box around it. And now I'm going to do Edit, Define Brush Preset you can see that it's on a transparent background and hit OK. Go into my brushes and select it. Turn on my background again and now you can see I just created my custom brush. So let's go ahead and give it some settings. Go into my brush panel and let's look at the shape dynamics. So now it's pressure sensitive, and you can see that as I press harder, the rings grow larger or smaller. Now you can see you could quickly create a brush and a custom brush and some effects really fast. So I'm going to go ahead, change my scattering, scatter a little bit and my spacing. Maybe add a little bit of texture to this. Set this to like darken. Change the scale of it. And look at my transfer and do some opacity jitter based off pen pressure. And you could see that we quickly created a brush and a brush preset. And we saved it. If we want to name it, we could just double click it in here and rename it. If we don't like it, on the bottom, we can go ahead and delete it, create a new one, or open the preset manager. There's my old one. I'm going to delete it. And that's how you create a simple custom brush. Now you're not limited to just creating a custom brush from another brush or just by painting. You can also do selections of photographs or pull details from photographs of you know buildings or trees or whatever and you can apply those as brush presets too. So you can build up a library of all sorts of different details that'll help you um, you know paint specific things and for specific projects and it's uh, really powerful and really helpful and a lot of concept artists definitely create a lot of custom brushes to help their workflows. And uh, this is just a small example. And in some more advanced tutorials, we have some uh, more customized brush creation.